a flawless complexion and an even skin tone is what we all dream about, but not many of us are so lucky. Facial pigmentation is a common problem. There can be various reasons for it, and some of the common ones are what I'm going to discuss today. First category are those pigmentary problems which are a direct result of sun exposure or UV rays. For example, freckles, sunspots, and tanning. Freckles are those tiny pigmented spots that you see on the butterfly area of the face, that is the cheeks, the bridge of the nose, in fair skin toned people on sun exposure. There is some seasonal variation and adequate sun protection leads to their disappearance. Second is the sunspots. Unlike freckles, once this pigmentation develops, it can grow bigger in size and darker in color with age. They are seen more commonly in the middle age or older age groups after years of sun exposure. Tanning we are all familiar with. Tanning is actually an inbuilt protective mechanism to prevent photo damage. Unfortunately, the protection provided is not complete. So you could still develop a sunburn in case of prolonged sun exposure. Tanning of course leads to an uneven skin tone. Also tanning itself indicates certain degree of photo damage. So repeated episodes of tanning could lead to earlier appearance of signs of aging like fine lines, wrinkles and leathery skin etc. The second category are those pigmentation problems which are multifactorial but the sun plays an important role. For example, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, melasma, this group of three conditions which are overlapping kind of lichen planus pigmentosus, Reels melanosus and onchronosus. I'll be discussing these in brief to help you identify your pigmentation problem. PIH or post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation is the light brown um, pigmentation left behind after any injury or inflammation in the skin. For example, dermatitis, acne, chemical burns, skulls, etc. We've all seen those acne marks which tend to persist weeks after the acne has healed. Second is the, uh, this, this PIH tends to worsen with sun exposure. Second condition is melasma or the mask of pregnancy as it is commonly called. It's also called as jhanya in Hindi. This is because many females see it for the first time during pregnancy around menopause or with the start of hormonal therapy, especially progesterone. It can be seen otherwise also. It's common in the reproductive age group that is 20 to 50 years of age. Though more common in females, it can be seen in males too. Melasma develops like brownish pigmented patches, can be there on the face, uh, forehead, cheeks, nose, upper lip, etc. Tends to progress with age and worsens with sun exposure. Second is the lichen planus pigmentosus. This is a kind of grayish pigmentation which covers the face, neck and upper body gradually over a period of time, more commonly seen in darker skin tone people, seen around middle aged, more common in females, at times triggered by the use of photosensitive substances like mustard oil, henna, hair dyes, etc. Similarly, Reels melanosis is a kind of pigmentation which is seen on the outer face, forehead, etc. Again, it's a pigment contact dermatitis due to repeated contact with small amounts of allergens, for example, the fragrance is present in cosmetics, the red and yellow dyes present in cosmetics, kum kum, henna, hair dyes, uh, fragrances like musk, then you have uh, lavender oil, jasmine oil, lemon oil or uh, mustard oil which can trigger this kind of a pigmentation. The nickel in artificial jewelry, textile dyes, all could lead to this kind of pigmentation. It tends to worsen with sun exposure. On the other hand, onchronosis is a kind of pigmentation, bluish pigmentation generally seen on the cheeks due to excessive use of skin lightening creams containing hydroquinone. So beware of self-medication in pigmentation especially. It also could develop after the use of oral, certain oral medicines like anti-malarials, minocycline, anti-seizure medicines, anti-cancer medicines etc. Another common condition which is becoming more and more common nowadays is acanthosis nigricans. 
it is a kind of thickening velvety thickening and darkening of skin in patches it's actually seen in body folds like neck and underarms it can be seen on the face too for example a patch on the forehead or the temple or underneath the eyes it is more common in males it is seen in obese and diabetics because of the underlying insulin resistance significant weight loss could lead to spontaneous regression i've already discussed under eye pigmentation or dark circles in my earlier post and the various reasons behind it in two of those conditions the pigmentation could extend on to the face first is the pigmentary demarcatory lines that is a very common condition it's a racial kind of a racial or ethnic pigmentation seen in nations more common in females appears for the first time around puberty it, it leads to a development of a pigmented v shaped or a w shaped patch extending either sideways or down from the eye socket it could be an edge shaped figure that's a band of pigmentation from the corner of your lips to your chin on both the sides so this tends to appear around puberty and then persists for life and very resistant to treatment now the slightly less common condition is the nevus of ota which is a bluish pigmentation which involves the eye and the skin around the eye generally one side this too can appear for the first time around puberty so these are some of the common conditions in my next post i'll be posting pictures of these conditions to help you understand them better but you'd still need the help of a dermatologist to identify the cause of your facial pigmentation and treat it appropriately i hope this was helpful thank you